What if I told you, every photo you post, every video you stream, every DM you send, travels through thousands of miles of cables, flashes of light, and my machines across the planet, all in less than the blink of an eye. Right now you're using the internet. But what is it, really? It's not just Wi-Fi. It's not a cloud. It's the largest, most complex machine ever built. And it's hidden in plain sight. From deep sea cables and billion dollar data centers, to the protocols and packets that hold the digital world together, we're going to strip it all down and make it make sense. Because once you understand how the internet actually works, you'll never look at your phone, your router, or your online life the same way again. Let's simplify the world's most powerful invention, right here on The Digital Lens. Let's start with the fundamentals. The internet is not some abstract invisible cloud floating through space. It's real, made of macure cables, servers, data centers, satellites, and billions of devices. It's basically a network of networks interconnected across the world using a shared language and set of rules. The entire system depends on hardware, fiber optic cables, under streets and oceans, routers and switches, in buildings and basements, towers and satellites for wireless access, data centers, housing the brains of major websites. When people say the internet is down, what they really mean is, one of the physical or logical connections in this network is broken. So how does information move through this system? Imagine every photo, message, or video is made of tiny digital packets, like individual cars on a highway. Each one contains part of your content, plus a label that tells it where to go. Say you send a message to your friend in another country, that message gets broken up into packets. Each packet may travel a uh, different path, through routers, underwater cables, and switches, before being reassembled at your friend's phone. That's how you send a selfie from Jamaica to Japan in under a second. These packets ride on physical cables, mostly fiber optic, that shoot light pulses through glass at two-thirds the speed of light. This is the backbone part of the internet. Surprisingly, over us 95% shield of international internet traffic still goes through these undersea cables, not satellites. There are literally thousands of miles of cables sitting at the bottom of the ocean, connecting continents like veins in a global nervous system. Now let's simplify what happens when you go to a website, say, youtube.com. You type in the name and hit enter. That's the start of a mind-blowingly fast process. First, your device checks if it knows the double asterisk IP address of that domain. If it doesn't, it asks the by domain name system, or DNS. Think of DNS as the internet's phone book. You know the name, youtube.com. But your computer needs the number, the IP address. It sends a request to a DNS server to translate the name into an address like 142.250.190.206. Once your device gets that number, it says, great, let's go there. That request then travels from your computer to your router, the box in your house that handles local connections. From there, it hits your YA modem, which sends the signal out to your internet service provider, mean ISP. Your ISP is like your gateway to the rest of the world. The request keeps hopping from router to router, like data jumping between check-in points at an airport. At some point, it reaches one of YouTube's massive data centers. There, a powerful server says, ah, this person wants the homepage, let me fetch that. It sends the web page, also as data packets, back to your device, which reassembles them like a digital puzzle. And all of this happens in milliseconds. Let's pause and talk about what's actually inside a data packet. Every data packet usually includes header, info like sender receiver addresses, packet number and protocols used, payload, the actual chunk of data, text, image, video, etc. Trailer, footer, checks to verify the packet wasn't corrupted. This system is called packet switching, and it allows the internet to scale globally without collapsing under pressure. Without packets, a single dropped connection would mean no message. With them, only missing packets need to be resent. This is also why your video might buffer if your connection is unstable, your device is waiting for all the packets to arrive and line up. So what are the rules that keep all of this working? Enter. Protocols. Protocols are agreed upon rules that every device follows to communicate clearly. The two most important ones are TCP /IP. This combo makes sure data is sent, tracked, and reassembled in the right order. 
HTTP teach HTTPS. This handles how your browser and websites exchange web content. HTTPS adds encryption, so no one can eavesdrop while your data is traveling. If the internet is a global postal system, then TCP IP is the address and tracking system, HTTP is the envelope, and HTTPS is the wax seal with a lock on it. Let's bust some popular myths. Myth number one, Wi-Fi is the internet. Nope, Wi-Fi is just a wireless way to connect to your local router. Your router still needs a modem to access the actual internet. Myth number two, the cloud is in the sky. Also wrong. The cloud just means your data is stored on someone else's server, usually in a massive warehouse. If you upload to Google Drive, it doesn't float into the ether. It lands on a hard drive, probably in a building owned by Google, Amazon, or Microsoft. It's just not your building. Myth number three. The internet is free. Technically, no. Billions of dollars go into maintaining servers, laying cables, securing infrastructure, and managing traffic. You pay for it with money, ads, or data. Let's talk on speed. There are two major factors that affect your internet performance. One, bandwidth. How much data can travel at once, like lane width on a highway? Two, latency. How long it takes data to go from A to B, like the travel time of a car? If your video buffers or your game lags, it's often because your bandwidth is limited, too many devices on the same network, or latency is too high, data has to travel too far or get stuck in traffic. This is why gamers care so much about ping. They want low latency, not just fast download speeds. Where does mobile internet fit in? When you use your phone's data, your request goes to a nearby cell tower, then to a central exchange point, and from there to the internet backbone. Modern networks like 5G reduce latency and increase bandwidth, making mobile connections almost as fast as fiber, in theory. But tower congestion, physical obstructions, and distance still matter. Let's now go deeper. What's an internet exchange point? These are physical locations where different networks meet and share traffic. Think of them as digital roundabouts. They allow ISPs, content providers, and corporations to directly exchange data without routing everything through long, inefficient paths. They're often located in major cities and are critical to the internet running efficiently. Atlanta, New York, London, Singapore all have massive exchange points. Without them, sending a message across town could take a detour through another country. Now here's the dark side. Because the internet is global, physical, and decentralized, it's also vulnerable. Cables get cut. Accidentally by ships. DNS servers get attacked. By hackers. Routers get overloaded during major news events or disasters. Governments can shut down access entirely, like pulling a plug. And then there's the issue of surveillance. Your data passes through dozens of checkpoints, each one a potential place to be logged, intercepted, or censored. This is why things like encryption, VPN, so, and card decentralized services matter more than ever. So what happens when the internet breaks? We don't just lose memes. We lose hospitals, traffic lights, credit card payments, supply chains, and even national defense systems. The internet isn't a luxury anymore. It's the backbone of civilization. So the next time you send a text, play a game, or watch a video, remember this. Your message might have or bounced off a satellite, raced through underground cables, passed through 10 routers, reassembled from 40 packets, verified by security protocols, and delivered, all in less than a second. That's the internet. It's not just technology, it's an invisible infrastructure that keeps the modern world standing. And now, you understand how it actually works. If this opened your eyes, hit the like button. And if you want more breakdowns of the invisible tech around you, we've got deep dives coming on fiber optics, VPNs, data centers, AI chips, and more. Got questions? Drop them in the comments, I reply to everyone. See you in the next one.